So we're going to work on test for practice. So number one, fill in the t-chart and then graph the function f of x equals 2 to the x power. So this is an exponential. So I've given you a t-chart with values. I want you to go ahead, find those values, and then plot those points. Give me the graph. Okay? So if I plug in negative 3, I get 2 to the negative 3. What is 2 to the negative 3? No. No. One eighth. Remember, this is one over two cubed, which is one over eight. This is why I'm putting the t-chart on there, because I want y'all to be forced to do these negative exponents, because it's important that you recognize how to do them. Okay. So what's 2 to the negative 2? 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. And then what's 2 to the negative 1? Which is 1 over 2. 2 to the 0? 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first power, 2, 2 squared, and 2 cubed is 8. So this gives us all of our points that we're going to use. So we've got negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1 eighth. What are you doing? Stop doing that and do it right. Okay. Negative two and one fourth. Something like that. Negative one and one half. Something like that. Zero and one. Really? <laughs> it just scrolled everything down. I was sitting there doing control Z and it was like not coming back and I'm like, ah. So, give me my pen. All right. What are you trying to do? Uh, it's not writing. I don't know why. This uh, W Acrobat's not very pen friendly. All right, and then two or one two, two four. And then three eight. So those are all of my points. So I need to connect them. And get my graph. One eighth of the way up. It's a really small number, right? So it's not it's not very far up. It's just one eighth up. You can get a decimal approximation of it. Put one eighth in your calculator and get what the value is. Right. Okay. Point one two five is very small. All right, so using the previous graph, graph the function 2 to the x plus 1 minus 3. Okay. 
This is just a translation problem. So how are we translating? Do we have a vertical translation? Do we have a horizontal translation? Do we have both? We do. So we're moving horizontally one to the left because it's x plus one. So that means we're going to the left one because we always change the sign of the one that's on x, right? So we're going to the left one. And what about minus three? What does that mean? Yeah. That means down three, okay? So to the left one, down three. So we're gonna look at all of our points. What were our points? We had negative three, one eighth, negative two, one fourth, So we're going to move all these values, one to the left and three down, which means my x value is going to decrease by one, and my y value is going to decrease by three. Okay? Do we see that's what we're doing when we translate something? We're just moving our x values and moving our y values. So our x values are going to decrease by one. So we're going to go to, I'm going to change the color here. So we'll decrease by one, so this will be negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Now our y values need to go down by three. So one eighth minus three is going to give us what? Negative two and seven eighths. What? Really, you know. <sighs> negative four, negative two, and seven eighths. Negative three. And what's three minus one fourth? Or one fourth minus three? Negative. negative two and three fourths and then one half minus three negative two and a half one minus three yeah that's the hard one right two minus three four minus three and eight minus three Now, what's the other thing that we have to shift? Well, besides the points in the graph, the, really? The horizontal asymptote has to be shifted as well, right? So, that's only a, the up-down shift. It doesn't shift left or right, right? So if y equals 0, 
becomes y equals negative 3. So we can go 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then plot all of our points. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 and 7 eighths. It's way down here. Somewhere down there. Negative 3 and 2 and 3 fourths. Somewhere up here. Negative 2 and negative 2 and a half here. Negative 1 and negative 2 here. Hey, that one worked. And then uh, 0, negative 1, 1, 1, 2, 5. So same graph, just moved down and to the left. This one is harder than the one I will give you, of course. I like to give you the harder one on the practice than on the test, but still, same basic principle will apply. Okay? Right, yeah. I will, definitely will not make you do it in Adobe. I will not do it in Adobe again. I know that you can, this is the first time I've done it in Adobe. I, I knew you could do it in Adobe. I didn't realize how bulky it was in Adobe. So from here on out, I will be copying and pasting it back into PowerPoint and doing it like I was supposed to. As a matter of fact, I probably could do it right now and it would be easier, it would cause me less headaches. So, you know what? I don't know. Oh no, you're snipping. Where's the rest of the test? That was it. That's how you found it. Yeah. Five questions. No, that's not all I. <laughs> I would honestly Where's the rest of the questions? Oh my God. Do I want to save the changes? No, I don't want to save the changes. <laughs> this is going to be the easiest test ever. Where did I drop it? There they are. Okay. Right on it? Yeah. And snipping? I don't know how well it works. It's interesting. Just snip it, work it, and then. <laughs> hey, who knows? Instead of having to actually. That's kind of cool.
Let's see if it works. All right, let's see how this goes. Just using the snipping tool. That's nice. I didn't even notice that. So India is currently one of the world's fastest growing countries. By 2040, the population is going to be higher than that of China. Okay? Near, uh, by 2050, nearly one-third of the world's population will live in those two countries alone. All right? Now, the exponential function f of x equals 574 times 1.026 to the x-th power models the population of India in millions x years after 1974. So we want to find the population of India in 2001 as modeled by this function. Okay? X will be 27, yes. Does everybody see how to get X? It's the number of years after 1974. You want 2001, so you just subtract 1974 from 2001. And you get X equals 27. Nice. See how smooth that is? It's like butter. All right, so f of x equals 574 times 1.026 to the 27th power. We just plug that in. Let's round it to the nearest million. So what will we get? So one billion, one hundred and forty-eight million people in two thousand one. One point one four eight billion people. It's a lot of people. No, it's not hyperbole. That's realistic. India got a bunch of people. <laughs> that was 2001. What would it be in 2015? What would X be in 2015? Forty-one. So change the 27. 41. 1.64 billion. If you look, yeah, was it this class that we saw that graph of the world's population and at a certain point it starts leveling off and kind of tweaks over a little bit and turns? Because at a certain point the world does not, is not able to sustain any more people. No, but that's interesting. You know? So, I mean, yeah, there, there, there's a break point where, you know, we've just got too many people and all of a sudden we don't have enough water, we don't have enough food, you know, or we have... We don't have enough sympathy to make sure that the food and water goes to the right places. How's that sound? Because we have so much food and water that it's ridiculous, but they're just not in the right place. Yeah. But I don't want to get into a philosophical debate about how bad we are at dis distributing water and uh, food. <laughs> this is a good problem. I find this one highly fascinating. I don't need to save it. In 1626, Peter Minuit convinced the Wappinger Indians to sell him Manhattan Island for $24. $24 worth of trinkets, beads. If the Native Americans had put that $24 into an interest-bearing account drawing 5% interest compounded continuously, how much would they have in their account in 2015? Okay, this is compounded continuously. So what's the formula for compounding continuously? PERT. Pert. A equals P times E to the RT. So 
So in this case, what's P? $24. E, what's the rate? 5%, so how do I write it? 0 0.05. How many years has it been? So we just do 2015 minus 1626. 389. So times 389. So 24 times E to the 0 0.05 times 389. It does. It is six, seven, one, seven, nine, eight, three, two, one, nine, and eighty-eight cents. So it's only six point seven billion dollars. I don't think I think I think Manhattan's worth more than that. Really? Yeah, you think about the, the amount of real estate that you know or the amount of uh, business that goes on in downtown Manhattan. Well, there's a lot of rude people, but there's also a lot of business that goes on there. A lot of money. So, 6.7 billionists probably wouldn't buy Manhattan today. But they'd have a lot of money. All right. All right, we want to convert the following functions to log functions. 2 to the 5th equals 32. How do I write that as a logarithmic function? Remember, log base b of x equals y same thing as b to the y equals x, right? Not times of, equals 5. Of does mean times in percentage problems, but only in percentage problems. So log base 2 of 32 equals 5. Remember, we take the base of this equals this. It always, bases are always the same. The base of the exponent and the base of the log are always going to be the same. And then we always say across and then back across. Okay? Alright, for B, what's the first step in B? Right, we need to rewrite that radical as an exponent. So we say that this is 81 to the 1 fourth equals 3. So now how do I write that as a log? Yes. Because that means 81 to the 1 fourth power equals 3. All right, and for C, I'm going to rewrite that one. There you go. Log base B of 343 equals 3. Because we're just taking base of this equals this. On A, is that 32 a regular number? It's a regular number. You're taking, it's the argument of the log. The log will always equal the exponent. Right? Huh? So what? The log will always equal the exponent. Correct. Correct. The log of the argument will always equal the exponent. All right.
Yeah, this is nice. I like this. Because usually I'll snip it and then paste it into, you know, uh, PowerPoint. So this is like saves a step, right? That's nice. It does. It doesn't have as many as. Uh, oh, it's got. It does. You can do a custom pin. Well. Customize. Let's make it purple, thick, with a round. Okay. Oh. Why? Because I feel like a child today. <laughs> crayons. <laughs> Just like crayons. All right, so how are we going to convert these into exponentials? Same way, right? Base, go across, go across. So what is log base 2 of 16 equals 4? <laughs> I, can't, I can't live like that. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> and with these, a lot of times you can know whether you did it right or not because does it make sense? Is 2 to the 4th equal to 16? Yeah, so you know you did it right because it gave, gave you a true statement. If you'd have rewrote that as, you know, 16 squared equals 4 then you'd have been like, mm, oh, no, that ain't right. Okay? So use some common sense when you look at these and make sure that what you got makes sense. All right, so what about the next one? And it's 36 to the 1 half equal to 6? All right, that's the square root, right? So the square root of 36 equals 6, so yes. All right, and then the last one. B to the fourth equals 188. Right. Yeah, you take the fourth root. What's a good way to remember when you don't have to have log at the end? What do you mean? Like someone, you know, when you move around and shift them, you know, log goes out of the side. I don't know. I don't know what you're asking. Because we're converting logs into exponentials. So we know our answer should be an exponential, not a, not a log. Like I said, that's the, 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 the hardest part of this is knowing that there's 7,000 different rules, and you need to know 6,998 of them. The other two are kind of superfluous. Right? But figuring out which two you don't need to know, that's... That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So solve these without using a calculator. Log base two of sixteen. Is that right? Why? Because all I'm saying is 2 to what power equals 16? This is the same as saying 2 to the x equals 16. So 2 to what power equals 16? 4. 2 to the 4th. Okay? What about law base 3 of 3? What? Was that 1? <laughs> sounded kind of, oh! Yes, 1. Why? Because 3 to the first power is 3. Or the fact that a log and itself mutually annihilate each other and just leave the one exponent, right? That was one of our rules. I love that rule. Mutually assured destruction. Okay? What about log base 7 of 1? Zero. Zero. Anything, any log, or anything 
to the zero power is one. Therefore, the log, no matter what the base of one, is zero. Yes? All right. Log base five of one over 25. Five to what power is one over 25? Right, because 25 is 5 squared, but it's in the denominator, therefore it's negative. That one's going to trip up a lot of people. What rule is natural log e to the fourth use? The mutually assured destruction rule. All right, what about log 10 to the x plus 3? What role does it use? Mutually assured destruction. When I write my textbook, that I'm going to put that's going to be the mutually assured destruction rule. Not the inverse property. Psh, that sounds stupid. The law. The law of mutually assured destruction. That would make math so much better, wouldn't it, if you come across rules like that? <laughs> yes, 2x minus 1. And why is this one? Same rule, right? It is the law of mutually assured destruction. 4 log of 4. 4 log base 4. All right? Everybody got those? Nothing. Well, remember, 4 to the log base 4. Those are those inverse properties. That's that mutually assured destruction thing. An exponent to the log or a log of an exponent, as long as the bases are the same, they destroy each other. And all you've got left, with an exponent, all you've got left is the exponent, but with a log, all you've got left is the argument. Okay? Because it's common log, which is base 10. It's, yeah, it's not stated, but it, it's understood that that log is a base 10. Same way with E. Natural log is base E, so you cancel out the E and the E. Okay? Any questions on those? All right. Expand the logarithmic functions as much as possible using the properties of logs. Simplify the final answer as much as possible. So we're going to do log base 5 of 25x squared. Right. Make sure you remember which rule is which. Remember, we got three rules, right? We've got log of m times n equals log of m plus log of n. We've got log of m divided by n equals log m minus log n. And we've got log of m to the p equals p log of m. Power rule. Okay? So we're going to rewrite this one since it's product rule, right? This is product. This is quotient. This is power. So we're going to rewrite it as log base 5 of 25 plus log base 5 of x squared. All right, so we need to keep going. So what do we need to do? Right, log base 5 of 25 is just 2, right? Because 5 to what power is 25? 2. What about here? Is there anything I can do there? Power rule. Power rule. Let's bring the 2 out front. 2 log base 5 of x. Okay. All 
All right, what about B? That's just straight up quotient, right? That's it. Now the last one, which will be worth more than the other two combined. All right, so did y'all follow Zach's logic there? Everything on top is going to be added. So log of 3 plus log of x plus log y to the fourth, because those are all things being multiplied together on the top. Anything on the bottom means I'm dividing by it. So I'm going to subtract log 4 and log of z cubed. Now I've got to use power rule for last step. So log 3 plus log x, bring the 4 out front, so plus 4 log y, minus log 4, bring the 3 out front, minus 3 log z. So that's one that looks complicated, but it's really not too bad. If you, as long as you remember that anything on the top is added and anything on the bottom is subtracted, okay? Who here is taking trig next semester? Nobody? Alrighty. Just curious. I just noticed that not a whole lot of people have registered yet, and I was just curious. Alrighty. All right, condense each logarithmic expression using the properties of the log and simplify the final answers as much as possible. So here we're just going in the opposite direction. Using the same rules, we're just going backwards. So log m plus log n equals log of m times n. Log m minus log n equals log of m divided by n and P log M equals log of M to the P. So on that first one, what are we going to say? So there's an example of getting two numbers, log base 6 of 9, no clue. Log base 6 of 4, no clue. But when I add them together, I get 2. So I find that just kind of interesting. Yeah, it does. It's a, it's a, it's a happy day. And it doesn't happen all the time, but... It does. It's like when you know you, when you come in and it's raining, but when you leave, the sun is out. It's like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> what happened? You don't deal with a whole lot of bases other than uh, you know common log and natural log, though. Uh, but it does happen every now and then. It does some <coughs> All right. What about the second one? Anything that's positive will be on top, and anything negative will be on the bottom. Times one, right? You can think about it. It's not necessary to put the plus one. Because what's the log of one? 
it's zero, right? So really, that was just not even needed to be there. No, times one, right? So 36 divided by 9 is 4. What's log base 4 of 4? 1. Anything positive goes on the top, anything negative goes on the bottom. And they're all multiplied, right? So anything positive is multiplied on the top, anything negative is multiplied on the bottom. All right, what about on the bottom? Be careful that three is on the outside, right? We need to start by using our power rule. So ln4 plus lnx cubed minus ln2 minus lny squared. Always make sure you don't have any coefficient in front of your logs before you start combining them. Now we can use that rule. Anything being positive goes on top. So 4 x cubed. Anything on the bottom is, or anything negative on the bottom is 2 y squared, and then simplify it, natural log of 2x cubed over y squared. Negative natural log of 2, negative natural log of y squared. So you multiply those two together on the bottom, because they're both negative. Anything negative goes on the bottom. On the bottom, simplification, 4 divided by 2 is just 2 over 1. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, any questions on those? And yes, ma'am. 4x3 says it's positive over Simplify the fraction. 4 divided by 2 is just 2. Right, here you've got 4 over 2. So you simplify that down to just 2 over 1. Okay. Use your calculator to find the value of the given log. So it's log base 3 of 14. Two point four. They can't. You just change a base. Well, some do. But if you don't, what do you do? You use the fact that this is natural log of 14 divided by natural log of 3. Remember, it's the argument over the base. And then use your calculator to do natural log of 14 divided by natural log of 3. 2.4. And you can use natural log or common log, either one. You, you should get the same answer. All right. What about log base 6 of 22? That's equal to natural log of 22 divided by natural log of 6. And 
the natural log, or log of log base 11 of 12. It's just natural log of 12 over natural log of 11. As long as it's point zero, I mean, as long as that's right, as long as one is the right answer, then no. Generally, if it asks four to the to the nearest, you'll you'll put those because they're considered uh, significant digits, you know, so that you know that you went out that far. Because if you didn't know, if you just put one, then somebody looking at it wouldn't know that it was, you know, accurate to the tenth of a digit. I would count. It, I would be fine with it, but. It's good practice to get into the habit of always putting out as many significant figures as you can. Okay? Any questions on that? It's just change a base formula. All right, and then last but definitely not least, the monsters. So let's start by solving this one. Really? That's as far as so let me go. That's cool. All right. So how do we solve something that's log base three of x plus one equals two? Remember, we had a list of if it looks like this, this is what we do. We have a log equals a number. What's the rule for solving an equation that's a log equals a number? All right, we're going to rewrite it as an exponential. Is what Joe said. So we do 3 to the 2 equals x plus 1. So anytime you've got the log of something equals a number, this is how you do it. Or if you've got the sum or difference of logs equals a number. Because when you have sum and difference of logs, we can use the product and quotient rules to collapse it down into a single log. Okay? So what's 3 squared? So 9 equals x plus 1. Subtract 1. x equals 8. We always like to check if we have a log in, a, in the beginning of our question, we like to go back and plug that value in just to make sure that it doesn't make our <coughs> argument negative. This one, of course, doesn't because if you plug in 8, you get 8 plus 1 is 9, and 9 is positive, so we're okay. So it is x equals 8. Yes, sir? I'm not moving it over. I'm, I'm just showing how to set up the problem. It's 3 to the second power equals x plus 1. That's the log base b of x equals y is the same thing as b to the y equals x. Just showing the flow of how to set the problem up. Yeah, I'm not trying to put 2 into x. That's what it looks like, isn't it? <laughs> All right, any questions on that one? Log equals a number. That's how you do it. All right, natural log of 2 plus natural log of x equals 3. This is the sum of logs equals a number. But isn't the sum of logs just a log, right? I can use that product rule. So what's that going to become? Natural log of what? 2x. 
All right, so how am I going to rewrite this as an exponent? <laughs> Right, base of natural log is e, so e to the third equals 2x. I want x by itself, divide by 2, x equals e cubed over 2. Do what now? Can you get an actual number by doing e to the cube with a decimal? It'll be a decimal, but I mean, yeah, it'll be a, a decimal approximation. then that would become natural log of 2x times 2, which would be 4x. So you'd have e cubed equals 4x. Remember, all you're doing is just multiplying whatever these two things are. Doesn't matter what they are, just multiply them together and turn it into one log. Right, that's the product property, product rule. All right. What about this one? Exponential equals an exponential. Question number one. Can the bases be made to be equal? If they can, then do that. Yes? Then do it. And set exponents equal. So can 27 be rewritten as base 3? Three? 3 to some power? Right, 27 is just 3 cubed. So if we have them as the same base, then we can just look at the exponents, set the exponents equal to each other. Subtract 2 from both sides, x equals 1. Okay. That's a good one. We like that one. That's it. All right. log equals log, just set your arguments equal. So here, what are we going to wind up with? x minus 4 equals 2x minus 7. All right, just looking at the arguments. So what's that going to give us? How are we going to solve this? Add 7, so we're going to get x plus 3 equals 2x. Subtract x, we get 3 equals x. Now, what's the last step? Plug it back in to make sure it doesn't make our argument negative. So if I plug in 3, 3 minus 4 is negative 1.
You what? Oh, I guarantee you somebody's going to miss that one. Okay. Granted, I'll give you most of you, I'll give you credit for, you know, getting the work done right, but you still get points counted off for not recognizing that the solution wasn't valid. Because it is a, I mean, it's a very legitimate part of the problem. If you start with a log, you have to check your answers. It's not a, you need to check your answers just to make sure they're right. It's a, you got to check your answers to verify that it's a solution. Okay. It's part of the problem. Checking your answers is part of the problem. Because when you plug in the value, you get a negative number in the argument. Yes. And you can't take the log of a negative number. Any problem that has a log in it. If it starts with a log in it, then you have to start, you have to check your answer. In every log, you have to put the the x value back into every argument and make sure that none of the arguments are negative or zero. Mm -hmm. 2x minus 7. Which if you put it in 2x minus 7, you get 6 minus 7 is negative 1. You still get a negative number, so it fails it on both of them. But it doesn't have to fail both of them. It, as long as it fails one of them, it doesn't work. Okay. And then lastly, natural log of x plus natural log of x minus 3 equals natural log of 10. So this is going to use that same rule. Log equals a log. We just set the arguments each, equal to each other. But notice on the left-hand side, I've got multiple logs. So this, this is our forest situation where we've got logs everywhere. Okay. So what have we got to do on the left-hand side? We want to collapse it down to one log. How do we collapse that down to one log? Right, we're going to use the product rule because it's addition. We're adding them, so we're going to use x times x minus 3. Right, so that becomes x squared minus 3x equals natural log of 10. Now we've got a log equal to a log, so we can just set the arguments equal to each other. So x squared minus 3x equals 10. Now what kind of equation is that? It's a quadratic equation. So how do we solve quadratics? Well, bef before, we, before we can do factoring our quadratic formula, what do we have to do? Right, we have to get everything together on one side set it equal to 0. So we get x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. So now we factor or we use quadratic formula. So we got x minus 5, x plus 2. So we set each one independently equal to 0. x minus 5 equals 0. x plus 2 equals 0. That gives us x equals 5, x equals negative 2. So let's check our answers because we have to because we started with logs. So if we plug in 5, natural log of 5, that's fine. 5 is positive. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 is positive. That's fine. 5 works. Plug in negative 2, natural log of negative 2. Can we take the natural log of negative 2? No, it's negative. We can't do that. So x equals 5 is the only solution. That one's the only one that's, that's, that works. Okay? Any questions? All right, I will post this. I will post this. It won't be in Blackboard, but it'll be in the playlist, and the link to the playlist is in Blackboard. All right, we will see y'all on Monday.